All right, guys, we're back with tier number three for the rookie tight end rankings. And I'm your host, Calvin Timms. Find me on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin or Dale at Dynasty underscore Dale. We just got done talking about the clear number one, Michael Mayer, and then the pretty sizable gap between him and Darnell Washington. And we were kind of talking a little bit. This next guy, I like a lot, but there is some risk with him, right? And we'll, we'll kind of break it down with him. But I could see this guy jumping up to my tier two with Darnell Washington, who we just talked about. Go check that video out. Um, but this guy, he looks smooth to me through the air. And I like this, I like what I see when I watch him. And I know that there's um, some of the biggest complaints I've seen with him are he doesn't utilize his size. But the prospect is going to be Sam Laporta, number three for me um, in tier number three. And he's with Iowa, six foot four, two hundred and fifty pounds. So same size as Michael Mayer. Um, smaller school, not as good of a school as Michael Mayer. And stats are not nearly as close, but his stats are actually comparable to Michael Mayer. And that's kind of what you know we we're talking about Darnell Washington and how explosive he was. Sam Laporta threw four years, and this is one of the downsides too. He is a senior, but you know it, it, it's kind of tough for. These Iowa guys, I think he went back because they had a good chance of, of making a bowl and all that stuff. So um, mm -hmm. thought that they could do something there. But 153 catches for 1,786 yards, 11.7 average there for five touchdowns. Now, the touchdowns aren't anywhere near someone like Michael Mayer. But, you know, the receptions and the yardage are pretty close. 11.7 is pretty close to what Michael Mayer was averaging. And that's just what made Darnell Washington such an outlier, averaging 17.2. So um, just wanted to highlight that. And another reason why I like Darnell Washington so much, you get, a, get the ball in his hands and he is dangerous. But, you know, Sam Laporta, he had a lot more opportunity than someone like Darnell Washington, similar to someone like Michael Mayer. But, again, he's a senior. You don't really love to see that. It, it does make you a little nervous. Um, the the statistical hit rate for seniors coming out into the NFL draft is a lot lower than, than juniors. So that makes you a little nervous there. But, you know, with the new NIL deals, um, Sam Laporte is probably going to be a third-round pick. So if he got decent money from that, I don't know, um, to be honest with you, because I don't follow college that much. But if he would have gotten, like, let's say he even gets, like, a million dollars that's probably going to be close to his NFL salary for the first four years of his career so you know I could see him going back and playing for a little bit more um, just to get some more money there but the other thing with him is I've heard the complaint that he's a big guy he's six foot four 250 pounds he's he's not tiny whatsoever but he plays kind of small like he doesn't he he avoids contact some yeah. um he kind of just plays like he he doesn't fight through kind of like guys that we've talked about already and some of the guys we'll talk about here later. Um, he just doesn't fight through tackles as much and and you know that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's something that you can improve on and maybe he just doesn't feel big enough. He can add some weight once he gets to the NFL. You know he could be playing at six foot four, two hundred and sixty five, and still be pretty athletic. But I think that he's gonna he. He has some of the, the most natural hands in this class for me. I, that's one of the biggest pluses for him. Mm -hmm. Like uh, there's routinely catches where I see him fully extended, catches it, brings it in, no problem. Um, he's very shifty on the ground too. Like he, he can um, run routes pretty well as well. You know, the gap between him and Michael Mayer is pretty large. Again, the touchdown threat there. But mm -hmm. I do like what I've seen from Sam Laporta. But he did go to Iowa, too. So there's another <laughs> kind of senior yes. from Iowa, doesn't play so big, yes. but good stats. So what are your thoughts on him? Um, Sam Laporta, another Big Ten guy. You know, uh, <laughs> I am a fan of the Big Ten, and and I really do like my Iowa tight ends. So, you know, I mean, I mean, on, honestly, for a tight end, like he does have pretty solid stats for an Iowa team that was – very bad offensively right, and if you watched right. any Iowa games last year I apologize because it was it was hard to watch and I mean of those of 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 the offense like he was really the shining star in it you know um he's a very good route runner he's got soft hands he doesn't drop a pass you know um you know I I, th I think the only thing he's really lacking in his game is being a blocker and I think that's something he can work on right um I mean I I mean I mean, for 
for most prospects, like it's going to the right place in the right environment, you know, and th- and that's going to prove true for uh, uh, for Sam Laporta. But you know, I I I feel he has really good football knowledge and football IQ, and that's going to go a lot further than than his physicality and 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 his size and stuff like that. So you know, I I, I think that's going to help him be in the league a long time and to really be a good a good a good serviceable tight end. You know, um, I don't really expect him to to be like a George Kittle or, you know, or Mark right. Andrews. I'm, I'm more expect him to be maybe like a, you know, like a Tyler Higby, which really isn't bad, but it's someone who <laughs> doesn't fame. really emerge <laughs> right. until and until until a few years into the league mm-hmm. where where he's more utilized and stuff like that. So, right. You know, I mean, I mean, it's just someone to look out for. You know, I, I would not be I would not be uh, rearing to draft him in the early rookie rounds but you know like he's just someone to look out for yeah he's someone that yeah again just like you mentioned but he's someone that i think could depending on testing if he tests pretty well he's gonna Mm -hmm. jump up to tier number two for me so um like i'll have him right there with with um washington but yeah, like I said, he has one of the most he's one of the best natural catchers in this draft class. So, there are some upsides there and yeah, we'll just see what he does when it comes to the testing, but we're starting to get to the point and I have these two guys in the same tier, but it's starting to there's a decent gap here, you know, more of like a 3A 3B between these two guys. I like what I've seen from this next guy, but it's yeah sam laporta is definitely the cream of the crop in this tier here so Mm -hmm. any last thoughts on him before we go on to the next guy all right tight end is fun to talk about we're we're just wrapping up as quickly as we can but uh no we got you got to know these guys and you know mark andrews is someone as as a perfect example george kittle these guys who they didn't have a ton of draft capital. They didn't. They weren't drafted in the first round. You know, they weren't expected to be massive superstars. There's always the hope. Mm-hmm. Greg Dulcich, for example. There's always the hope that these guys can come out and be superstars. But you never know. So knowing these guys now, just if you know, we see something after their after the season starts. You know, and and Sam Laporta starts to look like a superstar. Well, you're gonna know because we're telling you. Just keep an eye on him, pay attention to him, and and don't disregard him. So, um, that said, number two guy in this tier, Dalton Kincaid from Utah. Now, six foot four, two hundred and forty two pounds. He does look a little bit smaller when you watch the highlights on mm-hmm. him, and I will say he moves more like a wide receiver than a tight end, and I don't really love to see that because. I don't, you know, the Chase Claypools of the world who are those big wide receivers, right? They don't Mm -hmm. typically work out that well. Now, I will say his stats are pretty good. And, you know, he played one game as a rookie, as a freshman, 13 as a sophomore, 12 as a a senior here. Um, Marked increase in usage over both years, 36 to 70. Uh, if you exclude his one catch if in his one game that he played as a rookie. So just going on the last two years here, um, 1,414 yards, 16 touchdowns. So he has definitely got an, a nose for the end zone, but it is Pac-12. You like to see that because that means he's beating up on bad defenses, but you know you got to take that with a little pinch of salt, right? And that's where it does make me a little nervous about someone like Sam Laporta. I think that he's such a good route runner. He's got such good soft hands, but he doesn't really get many touchdowns. He only had five through four years. So um, the nice thing with Dalton Kincaid, again, he's only he's only really been playing the position um, as the starter for two years now. Market increase from year one to year two. 16 touchdowns, very explosive. He's got good size, but when you do watch him, um, he just doesn't play big at all. Uh, He plays like a receiver. He kind of, you know, he doesn't have a lot of power, and I think that's going to be one of the biggest things. So if you're not using him for blocking, and he's more of an Evan Ingram type of of tight end, that -hmm. just makes me nervous because you see a bunch of these guys every single year, but, you know, the the Jeremy Ruckerts or the Isaiah Likelys of the world who can be good in a pinch, you know, Mark Andrews goes down and Isaiah Likely has some some relevance there, but um, 
I don't think anybody was expecting Isaiah Likely to even really see the field too much this year as a as a fantasy weapon. So Dalton Kincaid kind of falls into that category for me, but he has a lot of upside. There is potential there. It just needs to be refined a little bit. What are your thoughts on him? Um, I, I, I do see that, but um, I, I do like Dalton Kincaid, you know, um, um, for the Utes last season, like he was the leading receiver in, in catches and yards. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he, he, he was the main target in, in, in the Ute system that I feel is more, what a more of your, name. <laughs> I know it, it is fascinating what, what all these college nicknames are, but Lord. It, it really is. Oh, man. But, but for the Utes, like they are more of a pro style offense. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's going to help him quite a bit, kind of kind of transition into the NFL. But, you know, I do agree that he he does have a slider frame and, and he's any he, and he does play more more of a I, I guess like the wide receiver one role in the in in that offense. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, I understand I get the worry, but you know, I mean he is a steady receiver. He has soft hands, you know. He he's he's knowledgeable. He's quick on his feet, you know. I I I think the big thing is that he's not used to any contested catches. He mm-hmm. he he doesn't have any great speed, you know. He's he's kind of just like an average size person, yeah. just with good hands. So I, <laughs> you know, um, I mean, I I can see him doing okay, but you know, um, I think he's gonna fall more into like what you were saying into like the. Evan Ingram, you know, kind of, kind of style of yeah, the, of guy. The biggest problem with him when I was watching him, and you know, it it's hard to explain. Like because I, <laughs> I always give myself a little bit of credit that I do have a pretty good eye for receivers. Like I, I'm always pretty good at identifying good receivers, and you know. I have a track record of about five, six years in a row of kind of identifying who is going to be good and who's kind of going to be a bust. You know, I've got a couple misses in there too, but typically I'm pretty accurate in terms of the top guys there. And the one thing with Dalton Kincaid, when I'm watching him and it's, it's hard to explain this. So I'm prefacing this. There's a reason why Um, he plays badly. (laughs) Like when he runs it, 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 it looks bad. Um, on tape and the the best way I can try to describe that is he just like he doesn't he runs into contact and it annoys me it's like he has like no vision and maybe that's the best way to kind of put it it's like he gets the ball and it's like where's the nearest defender I'm just gonna run right at mm-hmm. that guy and I'm like no don't don't do that just just go out about like it's just he he gets too caught up in like trying to just f- be tough you know like uh-huh. It's just that it bugs me and I hate watching that, you know, and like maybe it's something he can fix. But, you know, you look at someone last year, for example, you have guys like like Greg Dulcich. And what I liked about Greg Dulcich is once you got him and we saw it this year, once you got him in open space, it's like he's gone, man. Like he is hard to mm-hmm. to, to contain. Right. Where this guy, Dalton Kincaid, it's like. Oh yeah, you can contain me easily. Just get the ball in my hands. Like I'll create ways to get the ball in my hands. I'll get open, and then as soon as I get the ball, it's like, oh yeah, just come and get me. <laughs> it's like I, I don't know. It's just it bugs me when I was watching him because it was just like, what? It's just so off-putting. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. So, um, I get that there's the upside. There's the a lot of potential there, but it just definitely makes me a little nervous. Um, because like I would definitely rather have Greg Dulcich over this guy. You know sight on scene we saw what Greg Dulcich could do there this year as a rookie but like even Isaiah Likely you know Jeremy Ruckert on another team I'd probably still rather have Jeremy Ruckert than Dalton Kincaid and you know Jeremy Ruckert had a completely wasted (laughs) rookie year but he did unfortunately um, yeah yeah, so that's just kind of how I stand with him but I do see the path for him where he could Mm, I absolutely carve it out it just it's going to take a lot you know yeah so all right. Any yeah, last yeah. thoughts? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was. I was gonna say. I do agree with that. You know. I. I. That. that that's why I kind of see him similar to Sam Laporta in that. And that, like, it's probably gonna take both of them a little bit to get acclimated to the NFL and to really, yeah, stamp their name out. So yeah. you know, I. I. I can. I can see it. It's just gonna take a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know. And 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 then and then and then in Kincaid's position, like he's gonna have to 
be a good blocker, be a good special teamer. Like he's gonna have to do a lot of extra things to to really to really be a, a, a good tight end. And you know, like I've 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 been seeing some mock drafts of him going in the first round in 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 the NFL draft. That's shocking. So, <laughs> so but, so it's gonna right. be yeah it, it's gonna be interesting that because because he do it's 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 because he does have a have a prowess and you know he does have 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 good knowledge of the game and he's he's able to do routes and you know I I I I mean honestly for a tight end I would I would prefer my tight end to go into contact and in the seat contact like especially with with like you know safeties quarterbacks mm-hmm. kind of stuff like that where he could break a tackle and, right. and get the extra yardage so you know i'm I'm a little different on that aspect of you but you know um but i feel we're kind of similar with kincaid yeah we'll see how he tests it'll be yeah. it'll definitely be interesting but yes. you know i think yes. that's what the um if you're really boiling it down between tier one and tier two like I think Michael Mayer is probably the most pro ready out of all these guys, especially for fantasy. He's going to probably yes. produce the best as a rookie. Um, Darnell Washington, he's going to be pro ready as in he's going to go and he's going to be probably started a lot. Like he'll be utilized a lot. He might not be great for fantasy. We'll, we'll kind of have to wait and see on him, but um, he's someone that's going to be definitely worth watching, but he's going to be someone that's going to get a lot of usage early on. Like you just said with with Laporta and Kincaid, it kind of seems like they're going to need a little bit more development time. So essentially what we're saying is don't draft these guys and just go trade for them next year. In one year's time, go trade for these guys. But um, that's just kind of the the downside of uh, the tight end position right now. So, all right, any last thoughts on them before we we wrap this one up? Nope. Nope. All right, so this is the end for tier number three. We're going to take a quick break. And get back with tier number four, last two guys here. Only six guys for the tight ends that are really interesting for fantasy football, but we'll we'll cover them all and and kind of talk about them as the season goes on. Mm-hmm. But before we leave, make sure you like, comment, subscribe on the video. Do anything you can help us out there. Appreciate you guys. Follow us on Twitter, TDC underscore Calvin Dynasty Dale. Um, hit us up with any questions, anything you might have. We appreciate it. Thank you guys for joining, and we'll be right back with tier number four.